Hello, if I had to think about a fuel cell, I would be thinking about proton exchange membrane fuel cells. This is probably one of my favorite. In this presentation, which I'm going to enjoy a lot, we're going to have a look at the different uh, aspects of a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. We call it PEMF. And also we'll see some of uh, the more important components and configurations. This kind of fuel cells use a polymeric product in chain's membrane as electrolyte, which is going to separate the anode from the cathode. As you might know from other presentations in this course, this part of the, mem of the fuel cell is very important because it's going to separate the anode and the cathode, but it's also going to drive the protons to come from one part to the other, thus closing the circuit and generating the electricity that we need. Then, and that will be also issue uh, for one of our further presentations in which we will discuss about the composition of these membranes. These are the main features of uh, this kind of fuel cells. As we mentioned in other presentations, they're going to be using ionic exchange membranes uh, as electrolytes and we're going to have to work at very low temperatures because polymers tend to degrade at relatively low temperatures like 200 degrees. So we will be using very low temperatures and the charge transport will be driven by means of the protons that will be produced at the anode compartment. In general terms, I would say the most important problem of this, of these fuel cells is that they are very sensitive to poisoning and we have to use very pure hydrogen for its oxidation. This is something that we don't have to do if we're working at high temperatures. But still, they are very interesting, especially in portable applications like vehicles, because they are very light. Hmm? This could be the main scheme of a fuel cell using polymeric, polymeric electrolyte membranes. You could see the central part is still the electrolyte, which is a polymeric membrane and it is sandwiched by two electrodes, the anode and the cathode, and then we, can, we also have some other elements, like our uh, additional elements, we will help, which will help us driving the electricity from one part to the other of the cell. These are the so-called plates, and it also helps, to, also helps the hydrogen and the oxygen to diffuse through the electrodes. Mm. Um, as you can see in this microscope picture, in general terms, the membrane uh, is joined to the electrode by um, an interface which is usually prepared by synthetization, that is applying a lot of heat uh, pressure to the sound which, which is formed between the anode, the cathode and the membrane inside. And then what we have is a very, um, very nice, um, a very big contact surface between the membrane and the electrode. You can see here as well that in the interface um, we can usually find a layer which is quite rich in catalyst, uh, so usually is platinum, which will help us to drive the reactions, electrochemical reactions. Indeed this is one of the most important drawbacks of this kind of fuel cells. We need to have um, relatively um, expensive catalyst so that we can have the uh, electrochemical reactions working properly. Mm. These are some of the most um, important probably uh, of the lattice materials which have been investigated as an electrolyte in this kind of fuel cells. As you can see uh, these membranes will be polymeric and they are organic materials um, consisting on or consisting of a carbonate chain and some groups, ionic groups, which will help us to have high proton conductivities, usually sulfonic groups indeed. Coming back to uh, the scheme of a fuel cell, in the, in the, this kind of fuel cell in particular, we can see here a section of the cell and we see that uh, between the proton exchange membrane and the different current collector or, or plates we have the electrodes and also the catalyst layers. This electrode substrate is usually porous and will help us diffuse the gas from 
the entrance of the hydrogen or oxygen through the electrodes and to the proton exchange membranes. Again, the reaction will take place mainly in this over on this catalyst layer where the platinum particles will be cast and then the electrodes will go away to an external circuit and the protons will have to go through the electrolyte to the other part of the, of the cell. In this case, it will, they will go through the cathode. Um, let's have a look again at the section of the cell. In this case, we see the two parts. Um, it's very easy in this, in, in this uh, picture to see how um, one of the gases come in, comes in in this, in this part of the cell. It diffuses through the electrodes and then they reach the catalyst layer when they react and the membrane which is separating both parts will basically drive the different well the protons which are produced in this catalyst layer through uh, the cell to the other part of the section in this case to the cathode and you see that the electrons will uh, be transported uh, through an external circuit not through the membrane this is very important you can see here some pictures or examples of materials used um, as the electrode substrate. Um, again, and the membrane, the interface and the electrode. Uh, usually porous materials with more or less order, it depends on the application. Um, and the reason for having these porous materials is because we want to have very high area uh, to volume ratios so that we can have a lot of uh, surface or inter uh, exchange surface inside the electrodes uh, and not um, having a very big electrode, having a low volume with high areas of exchange. This is um, achieved by using these porous materials. Apart from the membrane and the electrodes, we also um, will need to use some additional elements like Teflon masks to separate uh, the different parts of the cell, especially to separate the membranes and the electrodes from the different uh, current plates and also to control the amount of water which is inside the membrane. Water is uh, one of the most, well water contents is one of the most important um, facts in this kind of fuel cells because the proton conductivity will be um, highly depending on the amount of water that we will find in the membrane. Finally, we can see here a graphite block, this is usually a current plate which will help us diffuse and hydrogen or oxygen depending on which electrode we are working with and also to drive the electrons, I mean the current, from or to other parts of the cell. So these current collectors are uh, technologically very important because uh, it will supply the necessary hydrogen and, uh, and oxygen flux and also will help us compact the MEA which is the central part of the cell consisting on the electrodes with the electrolyte in the middle. Um, it's also very important because we will, have, uh, we will need to have a water management process and also a temperature control. It's very common to use part of the heat which will be produced in the reaction in other parts of the plant. In this case, these current collectors will help us uh, take in out this heat and use it in other parts of the fuel cells plant. And these are some of the most uh, important configurations or possible configurations which are used in current collectors in this kind of fuel cells. You can see that the gas will be diffused if, um, following different flow patterns depends on the application and depends obviously on what we want to do. As a conclusion, I would like to remark that these fuel cells are very good for being used at low temperature applications because we're going to use polymeric materials in the electrolyte, which means that they're going to be very light, not very heavy. And this is also very good because the, the fact that we use low temperatures means that it will be easily, from a technological point of view, easily applicable to um, bike holes, cars, buses, or even so, some other applications uh, in a house, like um, maybe laptops and other very small devices. Uh, however, one of the most important drawbacks uh, of these fuel cells is that we 
are required to use very pure hydrogen because the catalysts that we need to use in the electrodes are very sensitive to poisoning. So um, we will need to have very pure hydrogen before uh, we use it in the anode and this will probably then uh, increase the cost of the operation. Thank you very much for your attention. I really hope that you enjoyed it as much as I've done.